back in front of the camera and I'm back in Steve's workshop. And why? Well, the title of the video will have told you that. I'm here to take some rocks and make them look shiny. But before we get into how you do that, we're going to talk about why. And I don't mean why I want to, I mean why it works. Now, we're all here for the rocks, let's be honest. So to, we're not going to go fully, uh, fully in depth on this subject because to understand reflectivity properly, you need to go deep into the subject of light behavior and that's complicated. So we're going to look, take a simplified overview on how you can take a fossil that looks like this, or sorry, why you can take a fossil that looks like this and make it look like this one. Now, the reflectivity, of, reflectivity in its simplest form is, as you think about it, a light wave comes in and bounces off the surface of, a, of an object. And in everyday life, reflectivity kind of, well, this is how you'll see most things, unless you're looking directly at the light source, which you will be when you view this on whatever screen or device you're viewing this on. And reflectivity, as you see it in everyday life, isn't the same. And it's quite easy to, tell, to distinguish between certain types of reflectivity when you look at a wall versus a mirror. There's quite a distinctive difference. And that's kind of the principle that comes into play when you're looking at these two. So why can you take various abrasive materials of, of finer and finer grits and make something that already seems quite flat becomes shiny. And it's because this isn't actually that flat. What you have on the surface there is lots of little micro kind of imperfections, which means that when light shines on it, you've got a diffuse reflection and the light is actually bouncing back in various different ways. Whereas on a polished surface like this one, the light is actually coming back and reflecting more directly in a, single, in a single kind of direction, which is why you end up with a more uniform and reflective surface. So, when you're actually moving from this cut surface, which is a very diffuse reflection, you're moving to a more specular reflection, which is more mirror-like on here. And what you're doing effectively is smoothing out all of those imperfections, all of those textures, until light can reflect in a more uniform manner like this. So why, when you have polished something like this, can you see a difference in the reflectivity of the, the subject between the crystalline form inside the structure of this ammonite and the more matte appearance of this somewhat reflective matrix? Well, that comes down to the refractive index of the material itself. Certain materials reflect light at different rates and in different ways. And as such, no matter how much you polish, the matrix, it won't ever look the same as this crystalline form because of the way light behaves when it interacts. Now, now we've covered the science, we're going to look into how this works. Well, sorry, how you can go about transitioning these two fossils from one into the other. So, right, so the easiest way to polish fossils to get a can of this, some of this, some elbow grease. Spray it on, and just keep rubbing, and eventually you'll get a rock that looked as shiny as the ones I showed you earlier. Of course, I'm kidding, although it does make it look nicer temporarily. Now, what differs between actual polishing and what they call multi-surface polish is that effectively what you're doing is just cleaning the surface. So this will make any slices you have look nicer once it cleans some of the dirt off and it will give you a principal kind of look of what it may look like once it's actually polished, but it isn't polished. And that's where the time comes in and the various different bits of paraphernalia I'm about to show you. You can use various different methods and well, you can use various different techniques or whatever of, of polishing in various different ways. You can do it by hand or you can do it with different tools. I'm gonna to be using a range of tools which you can see in front of you. Um, tool like this orbital sander will do uh, be a much quicker, more efficient method than doing it by hand, but there's nothing stopping you doing it by hand. And we're going to take this box of rocks, or some of these rocks, and polish these up. If you are looking to do anything like this yourself, you can get a standard kind of beginner's polishing kit from a place like Zoic Paleotech. And you can get unpolished cut rocks like these from our online shop. Um, so with further ado, let's get started. 
I should also highlight I'm not an expert and this was more of an experiment and a fun day for, for me and a colleague. In principle, polishing rocks is a fairly simple process. You take the rock you wish to polish and your variable, varying grits of sandpaper and whatever method of polishing you have, whether that's an orbital sander like I'm using, or by hand, or some other tools, etc, etc. And you work your way up through the grits. However, it's not as simple as apply the same process, time and pressure and grits to each slice. As you can see from some of the slices I'm doing, some of them are quite rough, the cuts were quite bad, and therefore they needed reshaping and harsher grits to begin with before moving up to the higher grits to actually polish these. So it's not a easy, cut and dry, one size fits all process for all of these slices because they, they are all different. Um, depending on the slice as well, you'll see it's cut through part of an ammonite, but how much of that is then there will depend on how much material you can afford to move before you start to lose more and more of the center of the ammonite or more and more of the actual specimen itself because it's cut at an angle. So you'll need to be careful around that. But what you want to do is spend the majority of your time actually smoothing out those imperfections at a lower grit like I'm doing here. With either wet or dry, um, take preference, I'm using dry here, no particular reason, it's just the way I've done it. Starting with 80 for some of them, I had to drop down to 40 to reshape and sand out some of the cuts because they were awful before moving up to 80, 120, 180 and so on. As previously mentioned, with this I am not an expert, in fact I'm fairly inexperienced. Um, the polishing powder that I have from Zoic, I only experimented with um, today. I didn't, I'm not overly used to using that and I actually finished all of these by just using wet and dry paper and going all the way up to, to 10,000 grit and that has produced what I believe to be quite satisfactory results for certain specimens. Certain specimens, however, I'll probably need to go back and revisit um, because I didn't remove enough imperfections at, at the lower grits and there's still scratches visible, slightly shinier scratches, but scratches visible. Um, but yeah, so I finished these with, with 10,000 grit and here are some before and afters and some of the better specimens which I um, would like to show you. That's all we've got for you today from the Etches collection. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and hopefully we'll see you next time.